Todd, leave now. <laughs> he left, you dork. <laughs> all right, all right. I think now we're now we're live. All right, now we're live. Now we're live. All right, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, Misfit Corner Comics Presents. This is the Hero Hour. I am, once again, your artist known as Andrew, and I'm joined by my good friend and a fantastic illustrator, Avery Butterworth. Say hi, Avery. Oh, see, now he wants to be quiet. You know how often it is I want to get him to just shut up, and he just doesn't do it? Oh, oh, hell. Let me make it's sure my, my internet connection. Oh, <laughs> I, I lagged out. I had to check, make sure my headphones were plugged in. I was worried you were yelling at me. And, no, no. Oh, hey, Todd, how are you? I'm doing good. You're, I'm so glad you're here. Oh. Now, listen. Now, listen. I, now, there's not a lot of people. Hey, Dillard, how's it going? He says, finally, something I can fap to. Oh, all right. Great. <laughs> um, listen, I want to apologize to everybody out there who was offended by anything that happened during the last show. I have talked to all my guys on the channel and I've told them under no circumstances should we have babies, baby diapers, or baby poo-poos on this stream. From now on... Was it offensive? It was offensive to everybody. It was not. <laughs> so none of that crap. Unless, of course, you want to bring your daughter on and show off her poo-poos again that was so funny <laughs> we had such a good time with that it led to a whole new se segment on the misfit quarter co uh comics um web uh youtube channel called todd thinks he's funny so, yeah, i'll talk to you about that later oh okay <laughs> uh dillard says poo-poo on your rules <laughs> yeah that's usually what happens guys what and then so why are uh, you guys are i'm looking at sketchbooks yeah, Avery. Uh, Avery found some stuff. Avery, found, you want to? I, I found an old sketchbook. That's I'm a looking at that thing like freaking awesome, man. That's gonna... a John, that's a John Paulion I inked from from the sketchbook they put out for that Earth X book. Really? When they put oh, out wow. the sketchbook, I threw a piece of vellum. So I'm uh, on I'm... one of John Paulion sketches, and I inked it. I'm oh, spotlighting. I'm spotlighting Avery so we can share a screen. So. And Evan Evans here, and he says, "Dillard, make a Discord." And that's 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 what I ain't. I found another old sketchbook. I like that. That was good. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, it's John Paulion, not me inking it. It is. Well, your your inks. I mean, obviously the pencils are really good, but. Oh yeah. Well, guys, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and warn you ahead of time. Um, we're bringing back one of my most famous and popular segments of the uh of the show this evening uh, we're doing a peep show ugh. and uh, i found something that i think i want to do a peep show about so mike saw something in the store the other day he said dad i'm buying this i said great save me one so i can do a peep show episode about it so you know that's going to happen so in other words you are forewarned that you're going to see my face I'm just telling you now, so you guys can jump whenever you whenever you get worried and want to go. <laughs> Let's see. Evan says, easy money for, for your Patreon. And then uh, Dillard says, nothing about Andrew is famous. No, nothing about me is famous. Absolutely not. Oh, speaking of which, i got to bring up my other camera. Oh, so I can record. Horrifying. What's horrifying? going to do a drawing oh i got a stack of comics here i'm so happy to go through that uh but first we'll uh first we'll do a little drawing why is my my quick time just does not want to work anymore it knows evan says i'm always worried and want to go and then dillard says i am mocking a webtoon i vomit whenever you show the plate guys no plate tonight no plate tonight i promise Actually, I do still have one breakout piece I need to put together, and uh, I'm having so many issues with the uh, with my QuickTime, I can't make a separate video. So no, no, well, no. Well, this is what this is what I'll end up. Are you stealing another one of those things? They're mine. I, well, they're not mine. But Why not? Did you leave me any? Oh, okay. There's plenty in that box. Okay. All right. Fine. Go ahead. Damn kids, man. 
don't know why we had them. I, I think it was mom who had one too. Yes, I know mom had one. I get the keys to the, get the wheelchair. Well, once yes, you yes, figure yes. out the how, you figure out why. Yeah, Todd, do you? Uh... Oh, wait a minute. Dillard says I inspired him. But really? That's, that's horrifying. Dillard, what did I do to inspire you? I find Andrew to be one of the most demotivating people I've ever met. Yeah, well. All right. Uh, it's time to start something new this evening. Let's see. What am I going to draw this evening? Uh, Evan says, what happened to your finger? I, I got a little hangnail, and it's it's it's... It's small and it's a pain in the butt and it's just irritating the crap out of me. So I put some antibiotic and wrapped it in a in a band aid. So that, that's code for his hand herpes is flared up again. <laughs> don't have hand herpes, y'all, please. All right. Because you don't know where they've been. No, I'm gonna look. How many peeps they've touched? That's what you get for rolling around touching strange peeps. <laughs> you know that's funny your peeps are the only one i touch so i don't know what whoa, you're whoa, talking about whoa whoa Un uncalled for sir there's, hold a, on a, second. there's, a, there's a line here hold on just a quick second hold on a quick second hold on a second hold on a second where's my where's my ability to mute me god dead air todd's not saying anything <laughs> i'm just enjoying the fire yeah. Okay. Sorry, my. All of a sudden, one second, my sons get walking out the door, and then all of a sudden, my wife says goodbye, and I'm like, "Whoa, <laughs> they're leaving me." They're going to the town center, so that's cool. That that means I can uh, draw in peace now. I don't know what the hell to draw. I lost my inspiration. Avery, give me something to draw. Give me an idea. Oh, wait a minute. Hold a second. Hold on a second. Let's see. Dillard says your webcomic idea. I'm making Cosmonaut for, for Webtoon. Oh, very cool. Evan Von Scriver says moisturize. Dillard says you are an inspiration and brave. Going on your YouTube going on your YouTube looking like you do gives inspiration to us all. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Dillard. Andrew, you should draw a storm shadow and a blizzard. <laughs> oh, let's see. What do I want to draw? Now, um, it's one of these things where I'm thinking to myself, what do I need to draw? I can't think of anything I need to draw. What do I want to draw? That's something different. I don't. Right now, it looks like a close up of Wendigo Wendigo's ass. <laughs> oh, no. No, no. We're not going to go there. All right. Let me think of something good. You know what? You know what's going to happen? I'm just going to start drawing, and it'll either, it'll either work itself out or it'll be dumb there's no ifs ands or buts <laughs> when to go butts get it when to go butts oh. terrible Andrew yeah I know you heard that the MCU lost uh, Spidey Guys, that's, it's not going to happen I lost Spider-Man it's not going to happen I'll What's tell not? you why Disney and uh, Disney and Sony make millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars off of Spider-Man, especially in the Marvel Universe movies. They're not going to just throw away millions and millions of dollars. Uh huh. You know. Yeah, no. Well, they're still going to make the movies. It's just Sony thinks they can do it without Marvel. Yeah. Well, I don't think that's. I think. I think they'll come to an agreement. Somebody will get a big paycheck and everybody will be happy. But until then, it's just fodder for YouTube channels, you know? Mm. Huh? Mm -mm -mm. Avery, what? is it something you want to make a video about? What? Sony and Marvel and... I could care less. I see, that's what I thought. I'm not going to go watch any of those movies anyway. See, Avery is their target audience, and he's, he's, he's done with them. 
What'd you guys forget? Oh, thank you. All right. Have I don't thought? like the, I don't like the new Spider-Man movies. Have you seen the most recent one? Yes. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. I can watch all that crap, and I didn't like it. Well, it wasn't made for you. You weren't the target audience, you know. You just said I was. Pick one. <laughs> Dillard says you should subvert our expectations and draw a furry. <laughs> An e uh, eagle checks in, says, "Hey, draw a dwarf as a furry." Why would I draw a dwarf as a furry? That doesn't. Dwarves are furry. <laughs> yeah, you think you think that? You draw you draw like a little midget bear with a big beard. Like Gimli had a baby with Teddy Ruxpin. That sounds horrible. It's right up your alley. What are you saying? <laughs> I don't know, Andrew. All right. It's not bad. That's more animated. It's no there's no inspiration in this sketch. But I have a I have a <clears throat> What did they forget this time? You should draw something cool. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> He's got furries to draw. <laughs> I do bet if you actually marketed this to the furry community, you'd sell a ton of them. Yeah, probably. Even though it's not actually a furry thing. Yeah. Well, From what I understand, they pay really well. I'm sure. Aren't they all like doctors and lawyers? I don't know. <laughs> But I've heard of I've heard stories about some legitimate artists who on the on on the DL do commission do these like furry commissions on certain websites and make bank. It's just weird. I don't understand people. I'm just trying to save up enough money to buy a private island. Oh so yeah. So I can move there by myself with my kids and wife. You notice he had to think about that last couple parts, yeah, right? But, but by himself. Avery, I mean, uh, Andrew, pin Avery. I want to see uh, what, he's, what he's flipping open. Not right this second. I'm working. Well, I can't switch to see him. You can't. He, he it, it, It's got it where you can't pick what you want to see. Yeah, he locked it. No, I spotlighted it is what I did. Hold on a second. I'm almost done with my drawing. Goodness gracious. It would be, fi it would be fine if... We could just pick because, you know, we're having our own conversation. Yeah, it'd be nice if I could actually, you know, and see what I want to see. I mean. Whatever, you big babies. All right, I canceled my spotlight and I put it on. There you go. Thank you. Oh, well, I put it on speaker view. Oh, that's no, right. I don't want to do that because it just uh, does just shows your face. I don't want to do that. Avery, that's awesome, dude. That Jessica Jones is awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Is that new? No, uh, no, no, it's... <laughs> Eagle says, laugh out loud, bear beard. Indicron TV says, what's up, Andrew? What's up, Indicron? Eagle says, all the animals are dying in the Hobbit movie. Dillard Draws says, maybe. You don't have to. Just saying. Yeah, no, we won't do that. All right, guys. You guys want to check out some comics? Sure. All right. We done looking at Avery now? I was just staring at how, that badass Jessica Jones. Yeah. It is a nice Jessica Jones. Actually, that's not Jessica Jones. That's the Defenders. Yeah, it's... I mean... Daredevil, Iron Fist. Well, yeah. yeah, it's got Jessica Jones in it, but it's got Iron Oh, yeah, there's the bottom, yeah. Now, is that the original or is that a print? That's the original. Okay. Have you ever made that available at the uh, auction? Uh, yeah, no one wants it. Oh. I, want, I want it. You don't count. A hundred bucks. <laughs> Eagle says, Eagle says, Jessica Jones isn't a furry. I feel lied to. I thought this was a furry channel. <laughs> That's just so wrong. That's just so wrong, man. Okay. All right. So I went by the comic store and picked up some more comics. And I was telling Avery before the show started that uh, there are times when you'll find something in a box 
and then you'll find like the next issue or maybe the next issue after that mm -hmm. and it'll all be in the same box and it's it's great when you do that mm -hmm. and uh tonight not only did that happen but i completed a limited series all in one box oh my god yes i know all right so let me show you guys what i got um just <sighs> Some some current comics thrown yeah, in here. Yeah, Red Hood yeah. and the Outlaw. I just I just really like this cover. Red Hood is supposed to be that's supposed to be a really good book. I'm not sure who this bad girl character is, but she looks awesome. I like her, so I may have to keep this one just for myself. But no, that's not going to happen. Uh, I got oh, some, there you some go. more some more issues of Spider Man. I there's, tell you what, every time the, I there's the money. Every there's time the I money. every time I see these, I pick them up. I have to. You have, yeah, I'm the same way. You have to, man. They're this amazing. Is, well, I got a I got a, a text message from my brother in law today. He must have watched one of my most recent videos and said, "Hey, put those Spider Mans aside for me." Yes, <laughs> that's not how this works. <laughs> I know. Well, he's willing to buy, but uh, this is uh, issue twelve of that Sorry. same Spider Man run. Um, here's a uh, I think this is it's a Hubert cover for Wolverine, but I'm not sure about the inside. Ooh. Yeah, that's who Hubert. That's a cyber. Oh, this is. Yeah, I mean it's not horrible, but it's. I was never a fan of Wolverine during this time frame, but uh, I, was, I know somebody I, who I might wasn't. like that. We have issue sixteen of of Spider Man. This is the the sideways issue with uh, X X Force. Bye, Todd. What? Huh? Bye, Todd. Bye. Why, why? Why? Why is he leaving? That was Todd's last. Uh, that was McFarlane's last. Oh really? I didn't realize that. Yeah, that was that was McFarland's last. The, what's the word balloon say on the cover? Oh, it says "Bye, Todd." Yeah, <gasps> it does. I just realized. Yeah, you, you That's, so, I remember the cover. I can't read it on the screen, but I remember it said "Bye, Todd" because that was McFarland's last issue. This he, is uh, issue fifteen. Oh. This is the Eric Larson issue. This is a. Uh, an early issue of, of Lucifer. I had a whole bunch of these and I've sold most of them, but this is uh, issue number seven. So most of the issues that I had were much later issues. So this is kind of cool having this early one. Uh, I got an Abe Sapien issue. I have a, I have a, a regular out there who is into Hellboy and any, everything Hellboy. Uh, we got another amazing Spider-Man. This is uh, a, this is a slot. And uh, who is this Perez? Oh, wait a minute. This let me see who which Perez it is. There's one of the Perez guys I really like. I never remember. George? First. No, well, no, this is Ramon Perez. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do like him, but I don't know if I like him on Spider-Man. Eh, it's not bad. It's not horrible, but cool. I look forward to looking through that one. Um, up, oh, got another issue of the uh, Ray Limited series. This is issue two. Oh, that's cool. Is that Casada's run? Yeah, yeah, this is Casada's run. This is um Oh no, this I I thought for a minute there that this was the Bear cover. It's not. Actually it says to Burke, but didn't uh Michael Bear do this? Why do I or maybe it was a different one, but I don't know, man. Uh I got two issues of Seven Soldiers the Bulleteer. This is a uh, I don't know um, who it is. Yannick Paquet on art. I've never to put heard together. Of that. I've never heard of that book. Yeah, I'm trying to put together a, 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 a bundle pack of that. Um, we've got oh, man, Spider Man 11. With the McFarlane's, dude. That's awesome. I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, we got a 20th anniversary sampler for Hellboy. Cool. Cool. I look forward to Isn't it. Isn't it amazing that. how the McFarlane's still shine? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, here's a uh, Mike Barron and Steve Rude Nexus Legends. This is issue number 16. Somebody came into the store recently and asked me if I had Silver Surfer, and I didn't. I really didn't have any Silver Surfer, so I'm looking for some it, of them. Is that number one of the Ron Lim book? No, this is actually number seven of the Ron oh, Lim book. okay. So it's an early issue. Most of the issues that I've found so far have been, you know, like in the 70s and so forth. Mm -hmm. This is one of the earlier ones, so I picked it up awesome. to, start, to start the collection. Oh, dude. X-Men versus the Avengers, The Temptation of Magneto. I don't remember that one. You know who did the art in this one? Mm-mm. Mark Silvestri. Oh, really? Yeah. What? Joseph Rubenstein on uh, inks, but Mark mm. Silvestri on uh, pencils. Dude, I loved it when Mark Silvestri did those pages like that of just a bunch of characters fighting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, dude, they were so good. Yeah, this was the original X-Men versus Avengers limited series. Oh, yeah. Which they did back in. Let me see what's the years this one. Like, I want those. I don't, I don't even have those. 
Uh, let's see. Oh my gosh! Look at the small print here. Is that pre X Men? Eighty seven. So that's pre X Men. No. no, I don't think so. Sylvester pre X Men. No, that's no. Pre- this this was probably. Well, it was it's it was well it was five years before the image stuff. So, was he doing X Men regularly then? Maybe not. Eighty seven. It might have been just before he was the regular guy. Yeah, this is uh, Astonishing X Men number four. This is from the uh, Josh Whedon um, Cassidy run. Oh, this is cool. I found a whole bunch of these old Flash issues. These are from uh, 89. Mm-hmm. Dude, these are freaking awesome. This yeah. is uh, issue number 32. Oh, and of course the cover's all warped. Yeah, I'm it, have to... it, it, It'd still be in the 50 cent bin. Yeah, I don't have 50 cent bin, so. Oh, well, maybe you need to for some stuff like that. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe just end up throwing it away, to be honest with you. No. But this is issue 32, this is issue 31, 27. Look at these great covers, man. Almost any major title from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, if you pick up a random issue, it's going to be better than almost anything yeah. put out today. This is issue three of the Ray series. This is the one that I think was the bear cover. Maybe. No, wait a minute. This says. No, it's Casada and Duberk. I don't know who the heck Duberk is. Maybe Bear was going by a pseudonym at that point. I don't know, because I remember he did something with that. Uh, we have number two of Teen Titans. This is the uh, the run with uh, Dan Jurgens and George Perez. Dan Jurgens was ink- uh, penciling it and writing it, and George Perez inked it. I like this series, and I'm looking for to complete a set of that. Uh, here's another early flash issue this is from uh, 88 this is issue number 10 what a great steve lyle cover that is awesome and then i actually have a whole bunch of these this is this is of course from the later uh later run this is uh 99 it looks like but this is a it was a six-part story called chain lightning and i got a whole bunch of the issues here let's see what else where i got here night force 46 47 49 yeah i got some night force in here and 48 so i got four out of six that's great and these are all Steve Lytle covers. So these are very cool. I look forward to checking these out. Oh, God. They're Mark Wade. I didn't even realize that. I saw Paul Peltier on art and figured that'd be awesome. But uh, Mark Wade used to be a decent writer. Then he lost his mind. Uh, I've got a copy of Battle Chasers oh. number two. Oh, sweet. Very cool. I, have, I, I don't have any of these issues anymore. So I think. Really? That, if I find them again, yeah, I think somebody yeah. came and bought them all up from my store. So I'm not sure if I do either. This would have been such a great series had he kept going, you know. Oh well. I actually know somewhere online where, where someone is selling um, one of the pages from issue number ten. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. The unreleased issue number ten. Very cool. Uh, we've got Magnus versus uh, our Predator versus Magnus Robot Fighter. It's a crossover from Dark Horse and Valiant. Is it Barry Windsor Smith uh, art? Barry Windsor Smith did the cover, uh, but Lee Weeks did the interior. Oh, oh that's cool. I was yes. like, I was, I was kind of like, oh, great, a crappy crossover. Yeah, no, 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 no. Look at that. Look at that. No, it's Lee Weeks. It's it's Lee Weeks. Good. That guy's always been good. Yes, yeah. yes, he is. This that's one of the reasons why I picked this up because I knew it was good. Uh, even, gonna... Lee, even Lee Weeks' weaker stuff is still pretty awesome. I, I wish I could draw like Lee, Lee Weeks on an off day. Ah, Kodiak yeah. was here and he jumped. Yeah, he's probably having audio trouble. He'll be, oh, he'll okay. be back. For okay. Kodiak to be that quiet for that long, something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and as as Avery said, uh, an issue of Night Force. This is another. This is actually issue number three. And mm. this is, of course, beautiful Gene Colan art. Colin, dude. I need to start doing videos instead of about comics, about specific artists and just show some of my favorite comics i have this is absolutely yeah. something that'd be awesome Avery. Cool. yeah and I, I need to start with like walter simons and then go to gene cole and oh absolutely kodiak's back can you hear me we can yeah, hear what's you up, buddy? Oh, yeah. that worked i got i got worried you jumped so yeah it's it, it, uh i had to reset that gotcha. robot fighter that versus predator that is literally the only book of that I've had that book but I've never seen nor had any other of the Magnus versus 
Uh, well, this was only a two issue series, so this is issue two of two. So yeah. there was only one other, but I'm going to keep an eye out because I remember getting this when it first came out. This you remember awesome. the first Batman versus uh, Predator and how good it was drawn? It's oh, so it was Cuber. It was one of the Cuberts. Uh, really? Do you guys remember the Superman? It was versus... a- I don't remember if it was Adam or Andy, but it was one of them. Do you remember the oh, Superman? Know there was... Remember the Superman versus Aliens? If Superman versus Alien was good, and then they started getting crazy with the stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, was was yeah. that wasn't that cr- uh, Chris Bro- Sprouse? No, 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 no. No, that was um, it was um, uh, John Bognoff, Bognoff, whatever his name, inked by Kevin Nolan. Okay. The Chris oh. Sprouse one you're thinking of was the was authority Wildcats. was no, it was the Wildcats or Authorities versus Aliens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. that was gotcha. awesome. But uh, back to the comics. We have Wolverine number 54. This is uh, um, Derek Robertson, uh, co-creator and artist for The Boys, if anybody if anybody hasn't put those names together. Mm. We got another uh, Mike McDonough's BPRD issue in here. A Flash um, from Flash Rebirth. Cool. And this, this guy's right here is the one that I found all four issues of. It's The World of Krypton by uh, John Byrne and Mike Mignola. I got issues one, two, three, and four all in the same box. That's awesome. So I am thrilled. Nice. And then uh, we've got another Rebirth issue, Red Hood and the Outlaws. I I stopped with the uh, Rebirth early on. Probably, you know, I went through maybe 10 or 12 issues. I did about a year worth of them, but I didn't go that far with some titles. And this is one of those titles I didn't go very far with. So I'm looking forward to checking this out. Uh, we got a current Justice League issue. This is uh, uh, Priest and Woods. Uh, I think it's Pete Woods on art, so that's cool. Uh, Wonder Woman Rebirth issue 12 with uh, Nicholas Scott on art. Very Does cool. Pete Woods still do stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's still around. Uh, and then we have uh, an issue of Justice League Dark, which I never picked. I never picked this title up at all, even when it first came, when, even when it were launched. But, dude, the art in here is really, really nice to the point where I am looking forward to flipping through this and reading this. So, definitely cool. Definitely cool. I uh, got a couple of uh, all-new X-Men issues with, uh, oh, well, it's got Bagley on the cover. He did this. He did the interior of this one. This is issue number five. This is issue 19. He did the cover, but he didn't do the inside. So, oh, well, I got tricked. I got tricked into buying it. Uh, got a Batman Beyond. This is the one. This is the series that was based on the animated series. Mm-hmm. I need to pad my uh, my box of kid friendly comics, so this is one that'll go in there. Uh, I guess I'm a kid. <laughs> oh yeah, well they're still good. Yeah. Um, we got another uh, Amazing Spider Man from Scott. Uh, slot. Sorry. Yeah. This was the ones with the uh, the um, Alex Ross covers. I think I've had like the first five or six of these so far, and they all sell. So that's fine. Uh, we got Wolverine number 25. This is from the Enemy of the State storyline with art by the great John Romita Jr. That was, uh, that was one of the last John Romita Jr. stories that I really enjoyed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is the one. This is this is a good one. And I think I have most of the storyline right now. So, cool. I look forward to checking this out. Uh, check it out. Green Arrow number one. This is the Kevin Smith, uh, Phil Hester um, book. I have like a whole bunch of these issues, but I don't think I had issue number one, so I'm very happy to, to add this to, to the collection. No. Oh man, I want to get some of those Larson Spider Man, dude. Oh yes, these are awesome. Oh, look what I got underneath it too. Yeah, nice, Mike Zek. Uh, is that is did Mike Zek draw the interior to that? Probably not. Yes, he did. I <sighs> he did really. Yes, this is Amazing Spider Man number three forty nine. This is the an Eric Larson issue. You know what? I haven't found in the bins yet. Is any of the um... wait flip wait 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 flip back to that big Spider-Man piece in there? I want to. I haven't seen a good Larson drawing in about fifteen years. <laughs> I haven't seen a good Larson oh, drawing, look at that, dude. Not bad, not bad. No, That's Lars- cool. Larson stuff was fun back then. Yeah, check this out. Let's see. Let's, let's I give him a hard time because it's just, even before Comics Gate, dude, he was a douche. He's a douche. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. Look at that. Look at that cover. That's so nice. This is uh. God, I need glasses. But most of the people in comics. 83. 83. It is. It's true. It's true. Stan Lee presents oh, Future Shock featuring Captain that. America. That's Mike Zeck and Mike Zach, dude. This is. Oh. 
Now, this issue is a little beat up, but I tell you what, this is well worth it. Well worth the price of admission. Mike Zek is the is the only guy that could ever draw Punisher. Him and Mike Zek and Goran Parlov. Oh yeah. Well, I like Steve Dillon on Punisher too. So yeah, it was all right. Very nice. I like you know I, I liked when Punisher first started going out and not wearing his stuff, but as a oh that's cool that's something new. But then when they switch and it's like Punisher wouldn't wear a costume. I'm like God dang it, dude. Put the costume back on him. <laughs> this is an entire issue of gorgeous Mike Zek art. Is that going in the dollar bin? Mm. Oh no, this is probably going to go on the wall somewhere. I got to check see if it's if it's got any value to it. In its current condition, it's probably worth half what it what it probably would guide for. But um, here we go. Here's a really old Superboy Legion of Superheroes. This is uh, you know whenever I see something. With a price tag of thirty-five cents, you know I got to pick it up. But wow, my that's bad. cool. What is this? It's July of seventies, seventy-seven. Oh wow, look at that first splash page. It's who did that's the gorgeous. Art? Um, let's see who did the art. Uh, artists James Sherman and Jack Abel. Hmm. Well, I don't think I'm familiar with either of those names. Oh wow. Kodiak, nice. did you ever see? Did you ever see uh, Mike Zach's Punisher? Uh, most likely, just didn't know, because I have a lot of Punisher, and I have downloaded a lot of Punisher. All right, hold on, I'm going to show it to you. Yeah. And then, last but not least, is a uh, Justice League of America issue. This is from '85. This is 241, and this is just during a time when it was really fun, and just. I really wish I was collecting superhero comics back in those days, you know? Back in 85, I was into Transformers and G.I. Joe, and I was ignoring yep. everything yep, yep, yep. superhero, I, uh, you know? Yeah, I rarely bought comics when I did back then. It was either a, a random issue of G.I. Joe, Transformers, or maybe like a Star Wars. Yep. So needless to say, these are some great new issues that I picked up tonight. Um, I've got to go back Friday and pick up some bags and boards and bag and board them, but... Uh, these will be added to the uh, store's collection this weekend. I, this is off topic, but you made me think of it with the 80s talk. In 86, I had to look it up. In 86, Marvel mm -hmm. celebrated their 25th. This year, they're celebrating their 80th. <laughs> I think their math is off. No, no, no. It's 80 years of, isn't it like 80 years of a it, certain it, character? No, no, it's it's sure. eighty. It's yeah, it, they're they're pulling a fast one just to make it. They're they're, they're counting the years. It was something else. Like, yeah, it's no, most likely. Oh yeah, yes. Check that out. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, wait, I recognize that cover. Yeah, this isn't is that, the return. This is return to big nothing. Um, isn't that um? Not that isn't cover. that a, a standalone graphic novel or is that the limited that's series? A standalone. Yeah, look at that, okay. dude. Oh, love it. You see that? I don't know if you can see the reflection. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. a good. Anytime I see a good upshot, and and they don't lose the proportion. This whole I, book I, is. You know, as a kid, I would have thought that was boring, but now I'm like, whoa. Oh, look at that, dude. No, Mike Zach is so awesome, dude. It's that's, not really doing much of anything original, nowadays. Uh, that's the inks and 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 paper of uh, of uh, Red Rooster there. What's that, uh, Avery? Is that the inks and paper? Yeah, yeah, that's the original that Red Rooster piece. Oh, what are you doing with that? Or you just have it out, or what? Yeah, I just have a portfolio out. This is why I like. This is what the Punisher used to be, right there. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. The, Dude, right. look, at how, look at how massive he drew Frank Castle's upper body. Like yeah, I think you can put dude. you can put Punisher in that costume, or you can have him just wearing the shirt or a flat jacket with that painted on it. It's fine. Yeah. It's just Frank Castle needs to be in dude, physically that. that's, that's Frank Castle yeah, yeah, he right there. He's just got to be a big dude. I got to keep reminding myself. I'm like, he could he could stand up to Bruce Wayne, but he's no Bruce Wayne. He's he's something else, and I don't know. I don't know how to. When just, when they did the the DC versus uh, Marvel series, did Punisher ever go up against Bat Batman? 
I'm sure he did. He went up against the Azbat. Because they had, oh, they, had to, okay. they had to go they had to do him versus a Batman that would take a shit because because Bruce Wayne would have took him down. Bruce Wayne wouldn't have put up with his antics. As Bats kinda didn't. But by then as Azriel was in his really messed up mask, he had really gone over the edge. So he just was like he didn't tolerate anyone, but as far as Punisher's methods, he didn't care. Hmm. See, I remember getting some of those issues back then, but not all of them. Mm-hmm. So, and I was never, I was never really a huge Punisher fan, to be honest with you. Especially back in like you know the high school days, I could care less about the Punisher. But um, you know, you get a really good artist on them, like John Romita Jr. You get a really good artist like uh, Mike Zack or Steve Dillon or. What's that guy's name? Parlov? Gorlon Parlov. Gorlon Parlov. Yeah, he's pretty awesome. Oh, okay. There's a couple of there's a couple of good Punisher books. Oh. The first one is a, a Circle of Blood by Mike Zack. This one is uh. The trade one, paperback. This is the the classic. Yep, the original miniseries. The original. Yeah. Miniseries. yeah. This one is classic. I mean, look at that. Oh, gee, that's so awesome. <laughs> Sick. I have that, that issue. I have issue one of that series. The whole this whole book is nothing but ju- like juicy, juicy like comic porn. It's so good. Um, Did you ever play the Xbox game? No. Are you a gamer at all? Uh, back in the day, maybe. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't. I can't find the time for it. But that game was brutal, and it was awesome. But yeah, you're talk- you're talking to a couple of guys that were arcade players. We weren't PlayStation and. Xbox players. Yeah, we were arcade. We were arcade players. So the other, the other one that's really good, that's worth get, getting, is Barbarian with a gun. Who's the I artist on that it. one? I think I have that. Who, who do you? Well, who? Think about, think about the artist who would literally call Punisher Barbarian with a gun. Self. Something me. John B. Summer. John B. Oh, okay. Right, because he drew Conan. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, jeez. Two and two, Buc- couldn't put it together. Buc- did a lot of Conan. Yeah. So this is like, look at that, dude. Oh, dude, look at, dude. That's a like the way he draws oh, Frank that. Castle. You can tell that's a dude that's had his nose broke like fifty times. Yeah, he like <laughs> literally yeah. knows how to draw. Like, look at that, the fucking Punisher. Yeah. Like, like he knows. Like this dude. Like, if he. If, if he didn't know what to do medically, he'd have cauliflower ear. I mean, look at this. Like, you don't even see this anymore. Like, so Punisher comes in and chokes out some chick and, like, shoots the bad guy. Uses her as a shield or something. Yeah, he, gra- he grabs the hooker by the throat. You know? Then oh, tosses Punisher her does? aside. Punisher does? That's yeah, dude, he walks Punisher in, he grabs that woman by the throat, shoots the dude he's after, then throws her aside like a rag doll. <laughs> well... Disrespecting right. the women, <laughs> then go, then goes and like just chills out, like nothing, like he did. Yeah, he, he looks like a, he just looks like a, like a. Oh uh, uh, wait, wait, go back one page. That face right there, like point to the the guy in the airplane, in the middle. Yeah, it, that will, that's that's John Versimmons. I mean, I've seen that hit. Yeah. That, oh yeah. That, um, that that's 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 Paul Kersey on steroids. Yeah, yeah for sure. I mean the whole the whole book is just dude like just dude look, good. dude look at how these people used to draw Punisher so him and Mike Zek like he he's imposing. Yeah, he was basic. I mean, he was a killer. So again, I think Barbarian with a gun is the definition of what he is. Yeah. And, yeah. And for, what and that's why these stories. That's why this story specifically and and like the ones with Zek really work is because they knew that the basically it's a it's a modern day conan story he's conan with a gun like come on dude are you kidding me <laughs> yeah he's he really is that's but, awesome you he's know also, he's also a serial serial killer yeah and yeah yeah all right todd do you have any more to show us because i'm going to do a, a different segment now i do hold on give me one second so this is all john busama it's amazing you should get it mm-hmm. um everybody dies uh, okay. And then, um, 
the Barracuda, uh, Goran Parlov, Garth Ennis. Uh, there it goes. Yeah, there we go. Um, I'm spotlighting you now. So Goran Parlov is just, I mean, it's just it's bloody. It's a gory book. It's it's Garth Ennis, um, but it is absolutely wicked. It is absolutely Punisher. And uh, let's see if I can get a good image of Punisher in there. It's, it, Goran Parlov has became one of my favorite artists. Um, like his storytelling is just badass. Um, let's see. If... This book is great. It's like a slow burn. It's just. Yeah, it's... I was going to say there's a lot of setup involved. It, it's a, a lot of setup. Well, it's a lot of setup, but it's it's not like it's it's just Wait. it's Barracuda. just pure storytelling, not a lot of flashy stuff. Wait, yeah, were Barracuda but still... and Frank Castle friends, or did they... no? <laughs> it's like it's it's extremely. Well, I have violent. a book that's called Punisher Barracuda. Yeah, yeah. did you ever? Barracuda. Yeah, there was a it was yeah, a four but... issued limited series with Barracuda. So, but are they enemies? What are they? They're just oh like... yeah, oh yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Barracuda was the bad was the bad guy. Um, but oh. there's like, um, but he's like one of those bad guys that you kind of liked, so they gave him his own limited series. Yeah, all of the all of the Barracuda stuff is really I, good. Yeah, that book was so racist; it was not even funny. I'm like, they would have never, Disney would have died <laughs> at this book. Yeah, it. I all I can do, all I can do is as absolutely like recommend, uh, Goran Parlov, uh, and Barracuda. And there's a there's a couple others. There's another one that's really good that I've, I've got the issues of. I don't have the I don't have the graphic novel. Up. I shouldn't say racist. I should say racial. Very cool. All um, right, all right, Andrew. I guess I'll give you back your show. Amit's he, Amit's here. He says hi, Andrew. What do you think about Spider Man? No longer in the MCU anymore. I guarantee you, money talks, and they will figure out a way to make it happen again because yep. that's millions and millions of dollars and and. Businesses nope. like Sony and Disney don't walk away from millions and millions of dollars. I think Ego's going to take it. I don't think they're going to. I don't think it's going to happen. You can always tell the SJWs versus or the normies versus you know the others on Twitter or whatever. Choose your poison, because it's always like people like us laughing our ass off. Ha ha! Sony stuck it to you. Whereas, yeah. uh, well, whereas no, they'll they'll, fi- they'll 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 figure out a way. They'll yeah. figure out a way. I don't hey. think so, dude. Hey, look all right, at guys. Andrew all clean shaven. It's not clean shaven. You look little, like you look like you look I like sh- you I shaved. Go. I shaved my neck a few days ago, but parts of, parts of Andrew are clean shaven. All right, everybody. <laughs> I don't want to see that part. It's time. It's time for everybody's favorite section of this of this show. Andrew we shaving parts. Done, we haven't done in a long, long time because you know we just haven't had haven't had the means. But now we're bringing back the peep show. (sighs) Yes, everyone. Yes. Mike and I were going, uh, we were walking through Walmart the other day and he walked past a section and said, Ooh, this looks interesting, dad. And I said, Oh, that's something that could be a peep show episode. So guess what? We're making a peep show episode. I don't know. I don't know if anybody here has ever seen these, but um, this is the limited edition hostesses hostesses. Moonberry Twinkies. Have you ever heard of Moonberry Twinkies? Me no. neither. Oh dear so, God, Andrew, what are you doing to yourself? Individually wrapped sponge cake with. I turned around for like five that. seconds and I look at your screen. Oh wait a minute! It says artificially flavored Moonberry. Is Moonberry bet, an actual flavor? Guys, I bet Does you. Does anybody know? Report him to YouTube. <laughs> Can get my channel shut down because of using yes. people like this. It's like, it's like he's holding a gun to himself. Those are Twinkies. Oh. Yeah, but look at him. Oh, you're right. This is actually really sad. It says here, product enlarged to show detail. <laughs> That's what my wife said. Oh, <laughs> I bet, I bet, I bet. Oh, wow. This expires October 8th. 2019. I know a couple of people who have birthdays on that day. Considering it has an expiration date of like 10 or 15 years, I don't know if I touch it, bro. Wait a minute. I'm just thinking about that. Doesn't doesn't Twinkies usually have like an expiration date of like centuries? 
No, oh well, we're gonna we're gonna try it anyway. We're gonna try it anyway. Hold on. I'm Ooh. so uh, uh, this is scary. All right, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. Are Twinkies usually this small? This they seems your bad, big fat small to me. Fingers. It seems small to me, but you know what? We're gonna give it a shot. Okay. They're all individually wrapped. All right. So for my pleasure. For I, my pleasure. Here's what we'll do. Well, it, you have a choice, people. You can either watch Andrew engorge himself on that gross-looking thing. <gasps> I'm going to look at Todd McFarlane's um, uh, Spider-Man. Ahmed says, eat the Twinkie, oh, wait, wait, Andrew, wait, wait. eat the Twinkie. Wait, that is so funny, Todd. Guys, this actually uh, smells really no, good. I grabbed a couple books. Wait, wait, wait for that. Come and match me, match me book for a book in a this minute. Is, this is like... I mean, it's bluish. the The sponge cake is oh, that's like blue. His Spider -Man. <laughs> I wonder if that's how my poop's gonna come out as blue. Blue dye. Yeah, most likely. Okay, guys, you ready? No. It has a it has a pungy a pungy odor to it. it I don't know if it has a berry flavor to it or not. I, it looks like an Oreo. I thought it was Oreo, and I was actually kind of intrigued. You know, by the way, my wife has forbidden me, but I always disobeyed her. Twinkies are my my go to dessert. I love Twinkies. Oh, I've I've never been a fan of Twinkies. I've never been a fan of Twinkies. Oh, this oh we is can't, something we new can't and interesting. Friends. For we me. can't be friends okay. no more. I, I'll have to live with myself then. All right, I'm gonna take a bite. I want you back. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna take a bite. Shut up, shut up. I'm gonna take a bite and let you guys know. Look at this is an okay. awesome oh, no, no, no. Dude, somebody clip that. Oh. Mm. Freeze frame that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna loop that backwards and forward. It looked like a big black. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! It, BBC, guys, we're not talking about watching Doctor Who. Exactly. Guys, going, going, going in. Going in. Didn't have much <laughs> I'm <laughs> gonna die. You're gonna give me a heart attack. As it penetrated my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. It didn't have much of a taste at all. <laughs> I'm dead. That's it. I'm over. But I Just, guess I don't know if it was it a little cream. salty at least. No, no, no. The creamy. But filling, once the cream comes out, it's just amazing. The creamy filling had a <sighs> had like a chemical aftertaste to it. <laughs> it wasn't that good. <laughs> and going in, it was all right. Going in, this about once you've heard it, you're dead with it. <laughs> you're stuck with it. I disavow, Andrew. Mm. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna try another one. Try another bite. Oh, oh my God! So there's not a lot to it. It's oh, ah, oh my God! It hasn't. It. Has, I think this actually does qualify as porn. It has an aftertaste that is not necessarily good. Hey, my Again, the blue. expiration. Oh, yeah. The expiration date is usually a good 10 or 20 years out, so... Mm -hmm. so... Ahmed says, everybody stop whining and let Andrew eat his Twinkie. No! <laughs> you don't understand. We've had to put up with this for 20 years. 30. We've got 30. 30. There was a 30 rather... Years. Guys, woo! I hate to say it, the the smell is a very pungent like a berry type smell, but I can't place it. Well, you should have asked him to take berry. a bath first. <laughs> <laughs> the aftertaste tastes like the pungent berry smell. I mean, they go together. Isn't that weird? It's really weird. <clears throat> Can I recommend these? No. I would say stay as far away from these as much as possible. But I'm going to eat another one. Because you know why? Because I am, I'm, I'm begging for begging for punishment. I don't understand. Yeah. You hate it, but you're gonna eat another one. He's squirting Who's... for a hurting. Did let you finish I... the first one? Let me see if I can take the whole thing in one. I'm just kidding. Oh God! Wait, did you finish yeah. the first one? Yeah, it took three bites. I, I it's not that big. So, I mean, it's... <laughs> guys, you guys are implying some really gross stuff here. This is. We're Anyone sucking down a Twinkie without using your teeth. <laughs> I'm using. I chewed it. I chewed it, and that's. I think that's how the the aftertaste gets built up. But let me. 
Let me try again. This is a new one. This is horrifying. I'm going to make sure corner nobody in the house is edition. watching. Hmm. Oh. Mm. oh, God. I'm looking down inking, and I'm just listening to the sounds. I'm like, why are you listening to this? You know, this cake, it, oh. it's, it's oh. a bluish cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Guys, sorry. The the, the aftertaste <laughs> hit you. It hits you and knocks you off your butt. This Yeah, he continues. Yeah, it looks like a, a big pin jerked off on a Twinkie. <laughs> it looks like a blue cake, but it looks almost looks like the blue was sprayed on, you know? Is it strange that I actually seen a cartoon of a big pin? <laughs> <sighs> oh, don't don't make it worse on purpose. Or just the tip, Andrew. I, I disavow this degeneracy. Mm. Okay. Mm. This is the stream you, you need to delete. No, you should do it. We should do this in slow motion. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh dude, slow, make a gif of the slow mo of him licking that Twinkie. No, my, the fir very first time when he stuck it in his mouth and he just opened wide and took it. BBC my style. tongue is my <laughs> tongue is still. You know blue. Andrew's. You know Andrew's comic book uh, or his uh, comics gate gif on Giphy is uh, unlisted. It's de it's delisted. Yeah. Is that? Wow. Huh? Probably oh. because it's comics gate. Yeah, because I tagged it comics gate. Yep. Whew. Man, I got was... I got banned on Instagram the other day and I couldn't like any posts. Oh, What'd you do? Yeah. I don't know. I couldn't what? like any posts for 24 hours the other usually, day. Usually I don't have a problem with Instagram, but I'm banned from all kinds of people I don't even know. Oh, I, could, I, could, I, a... I couldn't like anything the other day on Instagram for 24 hours. I got to tell you guys a story. That's weird. Um, there was a young lady that came into the store uh, this weekend. And she was there with her brother, and her brother liked Legos, so her brother was checking out, bought some of my Legos. And, but she was looking through the comics, and she was having a great time looking through the comics. She brought me a whole stack, and we were just chit-chatting. And she was, she was uh, asking me if I had any of the issues of Al Ewing's um, Immortal Hulk, the, the, whatever, whatever the, new, the new Hulk series is that's out. I forgot the name of it already. And I told her, no, I didn't have it. And I said, it's because it's because Al Ewing doesn't like me. And she goes, really? He blocked me on Facebook I, or he blocked me on Twitter is what she told me. And I said, do you follow Comicsgate? And she looked at me and said, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's great. And that's, and that's we just started talking about comics that's and comics. So and great. it's like it was so as soon as she told me that Al Ewing blocked her, it was like, sister. You're with me. Yes, You're there. exactly. It's like high five. <laughs> oh, dude. Sis. dude. Remember that dude we met, in, that Navy dude we met in Books a Million? Yes, yes. That's That was so funny. We're, we're, he, he, he saw us talking about comics, and he came around. He, he started talking to us, and he started talking to Avery. And I kind of stepped back because, you know, crazy people that just walk up to you and start talking to you kind of frightens me. And uh, at one point, we were walking out of the store, and he was walking with us. And we, they, he, she, he and Avery were still talking about comics. And then, kind of, he, Avery, kind of looked at him like, uh, "So, are you into YouTube channels or something like that?" And he said, "Oh yeah, yeah." He says, and he goes, uh, "What, what is it you said? You said your boy or something like that?" And he was like, "Oh yeah." Yep. <laughs> we were like, okay, we're safe. Yeah, we're cool. We're cool. <laughs> soon as soon as Avery said, "Yeah, boy," and he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm with you." <laughs> oh yeah, yep, yep, yep. Because that's back when Zach was still on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. What was so funny is it was almost like him confirming he knew what "yeah, boy" meant mm -hmm. was like was like Comicsgate safe word. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. You could you could we, say, we, "Oh, thank God, we're we're yeah, okay." Yeah. We're, we were in the CG underground, basically. <laughs> we're, 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 we have we have the code words and we have all that stuff. We yeah. have, you know, and your your boy is is like oh thank goodness. It's becoming more and more accepted though. Those who don't aren't comics gay. It's like yeah, I got friends in comics gay, and it's like, yep. So and it's and you know somebody pointed out a a, a term. I realized I'm that term. <laughs> it's back doors comics gay. You guys are front door. Y'all came in knowing what it was. I think. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. 
Oh, wait, it was Andrew that busted out laughing? Yeah. Holy I, crap. It was, the, it was the backdoor comment that just did it. Corrupted you. But no, I mean, you guys knew what it was. You followed it when it was not popular to follow it and stuff like that. Yeah. And I started following it not knowing what it was, you know? And, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, as I followed it more, it's starting to become more and more people are coming out going, you know what? Mainstream sucks. Maybe they got a point, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? So. Yeah, I actually, I actually had a lady ask me this past weekend if uh, if I did polls, poll list, and I said, "Oh no, don't do current mm -hmm. comics." Mm -mm. So I said, "Maybe one day, maybe one day, but no, not currently." Now, have you guys heard this little mini uproar over the uh, the new Marvel announcement for Doctor Justice and the J Team? No, what's that? Oh my That's gosh! All Marvel. right, hold on a second. Hold on a second. <sighs> Guys, it's so funny. Um, okay, don't uh, find the witch. Um, Marvel made this announcement of a new series coming out. Well, not maybe it's not a new series. Maybe it's uh, maybe it was intended to be a new new characters, and um, it's it, it was just they were they're getting they were getting slammed left and right over the announcement. Uh, there's a video from. Nick Lowe, Loeb, I think, Nick Lowe, about it. And um, a new era uh, of comics. And they did a really bad job. All right, hold on a second. Let me see. Can I share my screen? Yes, I can. Hold on a second. I'm going to share the screen, and I'm going to show it to you. Oh, no. He's going to show us something. Yeah. He's already shown us enough. All right, guys. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> this is um, Marvel Entertainment, August 19th. Release this 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 Twitter thing. Oh, I hold on a second. A lot, All right, can you guys hear that? We can hear him, but he's way low. Is there any way you can turn it up? Oh, you know what? Hold on a second. I can't see anything. That name sounds familiar, Nick Lowe. Yeah, hold on a second. Nick is, me... Nick is or was when I was there was the editor of all the X books. He's oh he's... oh I met him. That's that's why. <laughs> I think you met him. Yes, ah! uh, I did meet him. Ah! <laughs> I was in his office showing him I was talking to him. I've... Yeah, I Nick is that. cool, man. Nick is yeah. Nick is cool people. Uh, I may have accidentally just shared my uh, my uh, thing. Your thing. The call. You've, shared a, you've shared a lot of things on here. The call in. <laughs> Are, are you guys seeing my screen? Mm -hmm. No, we're seeing. I'm not seeing anything. All right, hold on a second. I need. To all I'm seeing. All stop I'm. Stop sharing. Hold on a second. Stop sharing. I need to go to, and I need to switch it over to the. Uh, oh man, Todd, that's remastered, isn't it? This. Yeah, somebody else has colored it. Uh, no. Digitally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I have the books. This. Yeah, that's a that's a reissue, so it's re re recolored. This. Yes. Really? Yes. Look at that color, man. That's digital color. Well, yeah. Well, this is the graphic novel. This is all like right. all the issues put together. Yeah, and they don't they don't leave it alone anymore. Yeah, you're all probably right. right. Can, you guys, can you guys still hear me? Yes. I mean, right, it still I, looks I know, odd. Might be because the paper's different. Okay. Hold on a second. You know, I just realized. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. I, I skipped a step. Hold on. Hold on. I skipped a step. Oh. <laughs> hold on. Wait a minute. Get it together. <sighs> okay. All right. Fine. I think I got it now. Oh, my God. Can you? Ah, oh, damn it. I shared it. Okay. I got it. Oh, my God. All right. Stop. 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 Okay. Here we go. All right. Now I'm sharing. You guys should probably be able to hear it. There you go. Good job. All right. Here we go. Ready? This is Nick Lowe, executive executive editor, with announcement from um, what month are we in? August 19th. Okay. Here you go. Could you guys hear that? No, not a, not um, a thing. Because I'm still not, hearing nothing. My, all right. I'm still hearing it through my headset. So hold oh, on. No. Oh. 
Select a microphone. Oh, you know what it probably is? Hold on a second. Let me do internal speakers input. Boomer stream. All right, can you hear me now? Darling boomer stream. Can you hear me now? Yes, show friend. Can you hear the can wait hold on. Can you hear the computer? Andrew Boomer? Over the years we've had the defenders. Yes. Yes. Okay. And now okay. Yes, it, but we can hear it. I'm gonna share screen. Just give me a second. Oh share it. Oh god, share it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just share it all over the place. <laughs> You just sounded like a ten dollar. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> just, just, just the enthusiasm of a ten dollar. Oh. Never mind. Share it. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now I'm sharing my screen. Okay. And then I'm gonna increase thank the size. God. Thank God. I'm gonna. Re okay, you ready? Here we go. Oh my God! Thank, thank <laughs> you. All right. <laughs> Shut up, Haley. <laughs> Shut up. Shut yeah, her. yeah, yeah. The dog barking in the background. I'm the problem. All right, be quiet. First, there was the Avengers, then the X-Men. Through the years, we've had the Defenders, the Thunderbolts. And now, I'm so excited to share with you a new super team, the J-Team. The world isn't fair. The world isn't right. <laughs> Zach Justice and his monster heroes are coming onto the scene to save the innocent and bring down the evil. In the 17 years, I've... Why did you pause it? I, because, you know, I don't want to get a... Uh, uh, a, uh, a strike, so we're gonna have to pause it. But every couple minutes, I'll get you. This is bad. Here, let me... He yeah. makes it work. That logo sucks. In editing comics, I've loved ushering in new characters, but I've never been so excited about a new team. The J team is gonna change part of the Marvel universe forever. And when do you get your paycheck from Disney? True. Not much is known about the man behind the mask. Oh my God! Look at that art. What the Marvel tapestry of incredible. Why are you excited about? You are a liar. Of comic to you, comic book readers. Look for Doc Justice in upcoming Marvel comics, and then stay tuned to Marvel.com for more incredible news about the J Team. Uh, that looks horrible. That yeah. was the most cringe. Thing First, there was the Avengers. Okay, but here's the thing: if you if you read the uh, the Twitter post where it says revolutionary, unstoppable, new, a wondrous and youthful squad. If you take the first letters, R-U-N-A-W-A-Y-S, it's the Runaways. They're doing oh, an gotcha. adult version of the Runaways. Or a you teen figured that squad. out on your own? No, I think I heard they were talking about oh, okay, runaway. I see it. A new era yeah. for the Runaway. Okay, okay. It's This is just horribly... I was like... Andrew, I didn't give you enough credit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You didn't give me enough credit for what? No, no. Never. I can't. I can't hit on uh or knock on uh Nick Lowe though. Though Nick Nick's good people. Yeah, who was I? Forgot who it was that was uh, doing a video about that video, and it, it was either Ethan or it was uh, DNC. And, but he, they were saying this guy is working really, really hard to save his job. Yeah, well, he is. I, I'll never forget it, man. We did um, during the first class uh, red carpet event. They someone was supposed to be in front of the camera, you know, talking about I, I can't remember the exact situation, but someone either either one of the hosts was supposed to be there uh, and no one showed or it was it was delayed by like two hours or something it, it was a, a minimum of two two and a half hours maybe three and i watched i no no joke no shit i watched nick Lowe stand there in front of a camera for like two to three hours just talking about the x-men and like the history of the x-men and the and he did it with excitement and that same energy you just saw for like three hours and no, no teleprompter, no notes, com literally by surprise. Like he wasn't supposed to even like be on camera. And they were like, Nick, can you, can you like talk for a minute? <laughs> Bamp for a little bit, you know? Yeah. And like, and he just like went for it for hours. And I, it was, it was probably one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. So he got my respect for sure. And, Plus and he was a really nice guy. And he sat here and watched me eat Twinkies. So, I mean. <laughs> his his level for being impressed. Well, that's the difference. Very, You're not uh, a nice guy. You're forcing your your paganism on everybody. 
It's not paganism. Is eating Twinkies considered paganism? No, think- it's considered food rape. <laughs> <laughs> Did that Twinkie consent? It whispered into my ear and said, please, please, bite me. <laughs> and then Andrew oh. said, shh, let it happen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Y'all are just bad. Y'all are bad. Oh, man. All right. We're going to wrap up this evening because I don't have anything else to share with you guys. And, and Oh, wait, and- wait, 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 wait. What? What? Todd wants to show this book he's been flipping through. I don't care. No, no. I don't care about showing the book. I'm just flipping through it. Just- wait, but that book's awesome because it's awesome. Now, is that a trade? Yeah, this is the um, this is all say- the whole. This is the McFarlane Spider-Man omnibus. Wait a oh, minute. Nice. Is that a hardcover? Yeah, yeah, that's sweet. That is really nice. Where yeah, this is that? the this is the uh, entire. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you the. Um, it's actually pretty cool. I'm actually thinking about getting a couple of these. So, this is the cover. Mm-hmm. And then on the back is like the entire run. Oh, okay. Nice. Right. That's so, so beautiful. Uh, I'm thinking nice. about getting it for. Um, the actually, colors are. It does make it pop. The, the extra yeah. color. I, I will say they also have uh, Larson's Amazing Spider-Man run in Omnibus, which I might I, I thought about getting. And um, supposedly in November, December, um, they're doing Jim Lee's complete X-Men, Uncanny X-Men and X-Men, like the whole thing <laughs> in one Omnibus. Oh, well, that's that pretty awesome. nice. Yeah, that'll that'll probably pick up. I mean, okay. again. I th- this is how bad modern comics is. I would rather buy the, the uh, same books like eight times. Yeah, they 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 have one for they have a couple yeah. of them for uh, Gene Colan's uh, Tomb of Dracula. Album. Yeah, like I have these comics and I have the hardbound book, and I'm probably gonna buy the comics again when I see them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ahmed says, "What the f was that? That J team looks so bad. It does. It does. It looks. I forgot." I yeah. forgot who, who was doing the video on it, but they were like, please, please, stores, do not order this book. I don't, I do will, not I'll, order I'll be honest, I do not understand. And maybe, I, I understand it's an industry thing, and I understand that comics don't sell as well as they used to. But I do not understand how Marvel could, um, h- how they've decided to drop, like purposely drop the talent level. It's it's kind of infuriating, the, the, you know the, what I mean? For as long and as hard as so many people have tried to get work at Marvel yeah, at, at long at, and hard, the high level, for it, them to like just literally let someone who looks like they just graduated from SVA and have never dr- drawn a comic book before in their lives, it's unbelievable to me. Somebody, something I've heard thrown a lot a lot around a lot by uh, Gabe uh, El Talib and and um. And uh, even even uh, Ethan is the loss of a good editor. Somebody that goes, no, you can do better than that. No, we're not going to do that. Yeah, there's bad ed- bad editors, but yeah. now Marvel and 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 comic industry have no editors. It's like, it's like, it's like as long as you do what we're programming you to do, you know, th- we have no issue. We're just just it's. Lack, the lack of a good editor, just somebody to say, "Nah, that sucks." Guess, Go back to the drawing. That's true, in that the editor is the person. It's the editor and the and the. Um, Notice, you know. I I kind of I kind of danced around that because I know you was in there about the time they started getting bad editors, and I think that's probably what happened with you. You're just like, <sighs> well, I was a shitlord. So I, I know it was great. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an accept. I understand that, like, in terms of I'm, I'm look, I, I fully understand. I'm, I am literally the world's worst employee because I, you know, I take things literally. So when people say, Hey, we really want to push boundaries, I'm like, All right, cool. I'm, I'm down with that. Let's and what, what I learned, and it took bows. me, and it, it took me, <laughs> straight up, it took me two years to understand was that when, when someone in, in a corporate environment says we want to push boundaries what they really are saying is don't do anything yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> don't yeah like, we're, we're gonna put this out it's a meme basically it's basically a meme we're gonna say we're gonna push boundaries but you guys like you got you guys we're not actually gonna let you 
you know yeah and i will say and i will say and i don't think this is like like spoiling any any big secret or anything but i think you know marvel's like anywhere else in corporate america i think there's always like a lot of fear i mean granted i haven't worked in that many corporate jobs but the the one that i did it was like there's so much fear everyone's afraid like people are just trying to like be there for another 10 years so they can retire kind of play you know what i mean like they're not trying to put their name on anything or try to like expose themselves to they're they just want to be whatever the safe thing is is that's what they want to do and you know i mean he said if you're, expose himself yeah <laughs> and before uh no before, rocking the boat before andrew closes it out i i saved this particularly for his show because it's a good story i there's something i call the dispassionate zone and I haven't figured out exactly where it is, but it's around 16, 17. You start going, eh. And, and it I'll lasts. I you were going to say that the dispassionate zone was somewhere around Misfit Corner. <laughs> no, but the dispassionate dis zone is somewhere around 16, 17. <laughs> things you normally like, like, like Elliot Fernandez, and I just throw name drop just because he doesn't like image. Then I realized the other day when he was saying he just had a birthday, he literally was right in the dispassionate zone when when image dropped. And I went through the dispassionate zone later than you guys. A lot of the books and I, stuff that I'm going, I'm fanatic about or, or, you know, kid zoned about. You guys were just getting into that dispassionate zone where you're like, Ugh, flip this or bump that. It's, it's getting old, whatever. Um, with me, I'm just enough younger that there's a few things. So I have a different, just a slightly younger outlook with me an amazing Spider-Man 361 carnage was introduced. All right. It was an unexpected hit, I guess, because, you know, because it was just at the time when my dad really wasn't hitting the comic book stores yet. And the comic book stores weren't huge yet. And you could still go and find uh, a month's worth of back issue not in a, you know in in the you could go to little champ which was still around and every time there was a little champ there was a jiffy across the store so he had his issue of 361 and i i that was the book that got me uh, you know i had already looked on his walls and seen the venom cover where venom's over spider-man and that was spooky i'm like what's up with spider-man why does he look like that you know and then a few years later carnage came out came out and i was reading that book over and over and he's like look you're gonna damage my copy we gotta get your copy and it was still in the month it was released we went to every jiffy and little champ in jacksonville this is a true story it was so awesome dad was like we're gonna find you a copy it was gone we ended up getting me the, I think it's 362 and 363, but we could never get me that 361. But as a result, that, that, that Mark Bagley picture of, of Venom at the end of that book where he's like, I'm going to have to go to the island and get Venom off the island. I'm like, Venom is awesome. And as a result, Venom became my favorite. You know, that was my thing for those two years or three. So. Yeah. Now we have a problem. My dad, you know, who's always, if I was into Transformers, that was the thing he was getting, whatever, like, like Andrew does for his kids. It's what they're into. You got, and, and I'm with, I am with my kids, you know? So I was into Venom. By that time, even in 90, early 90s, 300 was skyrocketed. The price on that, that issue was skyrocketed. He couldn't yeah. go back and get me those comic books. So, I don't remember where we got it. We got this trade, which is the first. I didn't even know what a trade was. It's oh yeah, that's the classic one. That's the yeah, nice. It's it's got teeth marks. It's got banged up. It's the first comic book I read front to back 20, 30 times. You know what I mean? And and yeah, it had a long lead up to it, but that's that's the story. And I just thought it was a you know, it's kind of an interesting little thing, you know. To yeah, it's awesome. That that thing right there is a classic book. This book right here, this because it's this book, no matter how damaged it gets or whatever, is probably my most prized possession. Yep. And I have, I used to, I think I used to have that. Like, I feel like that was one of those books that everybody had. At one yeah. Point. Yeah. At one point. And then uh, somewhere around 95, I looked it up. And this particular, that's, it's about the time 
they kind of kind of there was a pushback towards trades actually becoming valuable. Remember in the 90s, there was almost like this. Oh, you don't want like my dad hated trades for a while. And there was a couple other older comic book guys that hated trades and hated you spend money again to buy the whole bound volume. I don't know why. That's just something I overheard. Uh, they wanted to go for key issues. And then you go and look this up and it was, it was valuable because, you know, I guess kids my age couldn't get, afford to buy the books. So they bought the trade or I don't know how that works. Uh, no, See, that's I so have... funny. We, we really weren't into trades at all, were we? We were always I bought some. trying to find. Yeah, see, I never, I never cared about trades that, at all. That's how I got dark. So, Souls, uh, similar, I bought kind of similar but different. Like th this was it for me, man. Say, you say Dark Souls, Dark Phoenix, Dark Phoenix. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was waiting for it, for it to get to there because I was buying classic X Men at the time, waiting for it to get to Dark Phoenix Saga. Then a trade showed up of Dark Phoenix Saga in my comic shop, so right. I bought it, and then I bought it again as classic x-men or x-men classic i, I forget they, they switched the title but it, it was i bought weird. these i bought these in 1995 and i've had them since. i didn't even know apple seed was out back then dude yeah. i oh, yeah. i took the i mean this is like you can see like like uh, like yeah. todd and i were I, into anime before there was a such thing as a weeb yeah yeah yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude i took the, this. the only people that knew what manga and anime was were comic nerds i took this book everywhere audience. look at that like it's yeah, even yeah. split like hmm. I, I took this book everywhere I, I couldn't figure out how this guy drew this i couldn't do it i was like i don't understand like like look at that i couldn't that, figure it out back and then. that's back before there's no tablets there's that's that's pencils and ink right yeah, oh, yeah. Tip -tip. No, it's all uh, it's all yep it's all yep. traditional for sure and then, like, you got, like, classic, just classic shots. <laughs> Everybody's throwing down their ghost in the that. shell. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, so good, man. Just classic, classic work. Oh, wow. When did this Look at that, dude. Oh, look at that. I See, I didn't even know there was a ghost in the shell comic book. This is oh, the original. Dude. This is the the Dark Horse when Dark Horse printed it in English, and when when was this? When did this one come out? It's the movie came from uh came from uh the graphic the, the um manga. Yeah. Whereas I have more benefits, so I cannot complain. I'm, this is not a complaint. Disclaimer: There is so many benefits from my father being a comic book head. There is also some things that I would have missed out because of his own what he ignored and stared me away from. See what I mean? So I wouldn't have been a kid running into thing yeah. going, I'm buying this. This I, I got this in 1995. Yep. This is another one that I tore up. This this right here was like from the movie. When did I pick that? Oh, I picked yeah. this up when it was brand new. So this was, I don't know if it's going to have a copyright on it. Yeah, it'll have I like Avery's better because it's going to smell like cigarettes. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I seen the cigarette. No, I had to. I had to. Yeah. This is all the pen, like a lot of the pencil backgrounds and pencil stuff. Oh, you know what? That just cut my dick off. That's just painful. That's just like painful. Just like me imagining doing the work on that page. Oh, you oh, should yeah. see any one of stuff. those pages. Fuck that. Look at that, dude. Uh, so crazy. I stared at this shit so hard. I still do. What are you even talking about? It's just so good. Well, I, I know every single page in here by heart. Like, look at that stuff. Oh yeah, that's the that's the original. That's the Ghost in the Shell. Yep, this is the original manga. Mm -hmm. Well, the the Dark Horse English trade. Mm -hmm. I have the I have the Japanese for Ghost in the Shell too. I got this one from Romel. He actually cut pages out of here, like images. Oh my god. So that like, doesn't surprise me. This is like actually uh, Shiro's pencil sketches. And then like, yeah, like he cut out like, like, look at that. He cut out like an image or a part of it or something like the, the mech, the mech that he wanted to keep or something. Look at that, dude. Come on. So sick. Oh, yeah. See, I'm, I'm, it's got to be an older thing because I'm, 
way liking. I, I don't like when color's added. Color takes something from the pencils and inks. Yeah, I like black and white preferably. And then I, I although the classic, it's the older colors. If you look at like um, someone like Glennis Oliver, Olivier, I can't pronounce her last name, but she, uh, um, she was uh, um, a colorist for a long time. She did all of the original Wolverine um, issues, like the first 25 issues she colored. Um, it's it's that flat color where like you're not afraid to have a, a background that's yellow or bright yeah. red. Um, there's something about it. if you look at those pages, man. Her and she did like Avengers, all kinds of stuff like that stuff. It just pops so hard. She was like she was Len Wein's wife for a while. I think they got divorced, but um, she was she's incredible, man. Yeah. And but it's it's a combination of bright color and uh the paper type in fact um do you guys ever listen to uh uh fourth age Mm -mm. he's a youtuber he's awesome he's phenomenal um but he did this whole thing on on um the psychology of color and comics um it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. I could not have agreed more. It was like why you hate comics now, and it's 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 literally because the colors are not made for men. And he's being very literal. He, the guy is very very smart. Um, I recommend anyone anyone here if you if you're not listening to the Fourth Age to like, uh, to and like. He's talking about theory. He's talking about it literally what. No, he's being he's being straight up literal. Like he's also right. he's also like in he's he's in the whole uh cg movement thing um he's good dude i mean every video i've ever watched from that guy i'm always like oh dude i i he's so smart um i highly recommend recommend it uh but yeah he was talking about literally the color the way that men see color is different than the way women see color and since comics were primarily a male medium how the colors like the saturated colors with, with the, the Photoshop ability actually makes it harder for men to see the images. And I would, and that's why you say, say that modern color is, is uh, murky or it's not as poppy or bright. Uh-huh. Um, it's because it isn't because there's more color and that, that actually makes it harder. To see. Like, look at that, like that Wolverine color and cover you can see the yellow, you can see the orange, his hair is blue, and there's gray, and it pops, and you know exactly what's going on, yep. right? If you were to render that in full color, you wouldn't really, as a guy, you wouldn't be able to, unless it was done very, very well, you wouldn't really be able to see it as well as, as you would with flat color. And this was colored by Oliver and, and Barley. Yeah, there you go. Glennis Olivier, that's it. Oliver, Oliver. Yeah, she's, oh, yeah. she's phenomenal, dude. She's Lynn phenomenal. Barley, who was married to Frank Miller for a while, who yep. colored a lot of his stuff for a while. Glennis was, Glennis is, I, I recommend like looking at her early. That's it. See that blue background and stuff? Yeah. That's, totally, that's all her. But you see how straight up her colors are? Like you just can instantly tell what's going on. You know? Yeah. Look. And in fact, I would say that that's probably uh, Lynn Barley. Yeah. All right, so since everybody's pulling go. out, there goes some real stuff. like the purple backgrounds, the yellow skin, like that's. Yep. That's, she's very, very good. See now, Idris in the in the. Oh wait, that's the movie. Now I was gonna say anime. Yeah, no, I pulled out the movie. This is my steel book for uh, Scarlett Johansson and Ghost in the which, Shell, which wasn't as bad as it. Everybody said I just no, it was very bad, pretty. Dude. It was very pretty. Look how obvious it is. Kodiak. It wasn't as bad as it was got credit for. Hey, 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 hey! Don't pick oh, on oh, him wait, just wait, wait, because wait. he agrees with me. No, he. I. I see what he's. Oh God! It's. See, I. I, I told you guys I had de- just recently downloaded it, and just something about on the page looks better. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, that's the thing with uh, someone like Glenn. It's like, look at the red. The red panel. And the pink panel. And the pink background, like oh. what Glennis was really good at. She she knew what what the stuff was like. There's a really good chance that the reason those characters are wearing green with yellow hats 
is purely because of all to, to play off the color of Wolverine's costume. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 it's yeah. Pure color balance. So you look at that, a green background with a green floor. Like that's not like everyone nowadays is so worried about being real. Real. Yes. They're getting what it actually is. And that that green characters perfect. Look at this, dude. Instead of drawing like the city scene that you would see in the background, it's just yeah. all the neon signs. God damn. Yeah. OK. OK, guys, um, yeah. I got to catch up on the chat. D made a comment that he doesn't want me to to let Avery know about, but I'm going to have to share it anyway. Uh oh. So let me go back a little bit. Uh, Abe Sapien. Hey, how's it going, Abe? Says Apple Seed is, is awesome. Yeah. And D says, I love Lone Wolf and Cub and that, Epic. It. And Epic did Akira and I loved. The Ahmed P- says, the Is there going to be a live action J Team movie? It better not have 99.9% of the bad CGI, uh, just like that stupid S in Dark Phoenix. Did the and J they, team meet, meet on J date? No. Probably. Oh, 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 God. I don't even know what that is, but I don't know that I want to. D says colors aren't for men. Is that why Avery's a good colorist? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 please stop making fun of my micro penis. It's a medical condition. <laughs> Pop Queen says hi. And then uh, D says, please don't tell Avery. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you can't take a joke, you got no business on YouTube or in comics. Right. Or yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Or in America. If you, if you can't America. take if you can't take a joke. This, this is true. I've actually started taking things better since I've been yeah, yeah around. So. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna wrap up. We're already uh, an hour and a half in, and uh, I hope you all had a good time. I had a good time. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah, it's a whole nother conversation. You know, I don't have any issues of Akira whatsoever. I got a question for I you. I have a couple of the Dark Horse collections. Mm-hmm. I have one, two, and one of the other ones somewhere. And I have a couple of random issues of the Epic. Where I the believe first, I have. Where, I believe where uh, have. Steve Olaf co- colored them. Yep. yep. All the, op- the early days of the, like the founding of all the optics. Dude, I believe I, I have pretty much everything Akira, uh, Katsuhiro Tomo did. I've got, oh, wow. I've got all six volumes. I've got the storyboards to Akira. I've got Akira Club. I've got nice. all his earlier stuff since in the 70s. I've got the Steam Boy storyboards. So I've why got- are you in New York and not here? Because <laughs> he, 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 he can make a living doing other things in New York that he can't make uh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. SJW Central. See, I'm, I'm, going up, I'm going up to New York really soon. I'm going to visit him. You know what? If, if Todd ever does a book and it took off and did really big, you never know what he might do. All right. If he, doesn't have to be, if he doesn't have to be in New York and he can do it on his own, doing his own book and make good money, he'll probably leave New York to, to avoid the taxes. Uh, I, I will, you know, we, 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 we're, you know, you never know. Yeah. yeah. All right. On that note, thank you guys so much for joining the show. Wait, wait, I wait. Hope wait. you all had a good, no, shut up. Listen, listen. What? If you wait, wait, guys. You've stopped us like guys, three listen. times now. If we can get Andrew to a hundred thousand subs. Yeah. Oh. Right. No, 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 listen, listen. Yeah, I'm listening. We're going to get, Andrew's going to vow right now. If he gets to a hundred thousand subs, he's going to let Avery and I. And Todd, if he wants to come down, it's just a long journey, you know. We're, he's gonna let us get him drunk. <laughs> <laughs> See, the I told you, hundred thousand subs. Way. Andrew's eating are gonna. <laughs> Wait, I, <feel laughs> that. Yeah, I think that worked. On that note, good night, everybody. <laughs> good night, everybody.